Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. I'm Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is Design of Experiments. An alternative title, it's the fastest way to find out. If you have a technical problem and you're trying to make the best performance to come out of your process, I'm a manufacturing guy so I'm going to talk about machinery today, but it could also be your marketing process, it could be your website, and you're trying to get the best performance, the best return from your process, design of experiments would be the weapon of choice because it is the fastest way to find out. Now, what's your alternative to using tools, of course, uh, when you're trying to get a machine to work, a website to work, whatever it is? You use skill and experience. You employ good people and you trust them. You trust them to find the best settings on a particular process. Well, what we're going to talk about first is why that's never going to find the best settings. Let me show you how complicated your processes are and what your technical people are trying to do. So the example we are going to use, let's just talk injection molding for a second. It doesn't really matter what the process is. Um, this could be any technical process, any piece of machinery that's got settings, speeds, feeds, uh, choices of material, etc. Um, you've got to find the best settings. Let's have a look how complicated this problem is. So let's look at the variables that your skilled person might be having to play with. So we're going to go regrind. We're going to go from 0% up to 100% regrind. We're going to go material temperature. So the material temperature could be 200 degrees, could go up to 250. We're going to go fixed tool temperature. Uh, could be as low as 14 degrees, could be as high as 60. We're going to go mold tool temperature. And again, 14 to 60. Screw speed. Screw speed goes from 50 to 275. Injection speed. That's going to go from 10 to 100. Cooling time is going to go from 5 to 25. And finally, hold pressure is going to go from 100 to 500. Let's have a look. How many, how many dials is our technical, our technical person dealing with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's eight dials on the machine. He'll probably have this sorted out by lunchtime, I dare say, because it's only eight things to play with. Not too tricky at all, is it? But let's look at how many choices he has to choose from. And don't forget, what we're interested in is the best settings. Cheapest, fastest, best quality. I don't just mean settings that work. I know you can find settings that work. You are trying to smash the competition. You need the very best productive settings for that very expensive equipment that you're running. So let's take a look. How many choices has this guy got? Well, we'll start at the top. 100 multiplied by 50 multiplied by, what's this? 46. He's got another 46 choices there. He's got 225 choices on the screw speed. Let's multiply that in there. 90 choices on the injection speed. 
he's got 20 choices on the cooling time and finally 400 choices on the hold pressure now in order to save a little bit of time I made the calculation before I started the video five minutes ago and there's my calculator I'm going to just show you because I can't even read the numbers I think it's something like 1500 trillion choices I think that's the number maybe a few more noughts than that who cares it's too complicated for your technical guys to even have a chance of finding the very best settings it is way too complicated and therefore what we're going to do is we're going to use some relatively simple maths it's this technique has been around for a hundred years and it's known as design of experiments and we are going to now take a look at a case study that deals with this very particular problem hope you enjoy it